Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's a Monday. So far, my Monday's doing pretty good, and I wish, I wish, I wish it stays that way. Um, it's pretty dreary and rainy today, but, you know, it is what it is. Some of y'all on Facebook know what today's theme is today. Think about how it makes you feel, and oh my god, are you seriously going to park like that? Okay, I guess they are. They made themselves a parking spot. Um, <clears throat> so, and they notice I'm looking at them. I don't care. Let them look. Anywho, anywho, so today's theme, it's Monday, and it's go, 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 go. Thing is, in our life, we are told to go, 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 even without a thought, but the thing is, when are you going to have a moment to take your merry time? The only time I have control. I pick and choose what I control day by day. And I pick and choose when I go on autopilot. <coughs> Sorry. So, the thing is... You what? Sorry, I got a message. I'll answer that in a second. Um, let me deflate a moment. So, um, you've got to have you time. I know. I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, but that's so selfish." No, it's healthy. It's perfectly health, healthy to have you time to pick and choose your battles. If you make yourself face every little issue and harp on it and let it hang over your head, it's, I mean, you, you are going to, you're going to lose it. It's insanity to try to do that. So, I mean, it, it is it is insanity to do that, to harp on yourself, to be unkind to yourself. A lot of people put themselves down and they don't even realize it, but, if, but now it's natural and normal to them. Like, I have customers on my day job come to me and they're like, oh, I'm slow and stupid. And I'm like... No, you're not. Be nice to yourself. Uh, it's okay for a little slow. It's okay. It's okay if you can't catch on like everybody else. And, and don't ever dare compare yourself to other people. Because you're not them. You're you. No one else can be you. Everyone else is taken. Sorry, I just noticed something on my fingernail. Huh. Weird. But, um, I've painted my fingernails so much, they got the hue, the, the hue, and the, the, col the, the coloring hue of the last nail polish I had on. My thumbs, my thumbs take very well to, to uh, color. But as for my other fingers, no, just the thumbs. So, oh, so they finally realized it's not a parking spot. Okay, they got out and saw that they were in the, they were taking up four spaces. Each tire had a space. Um, 
we need to learn and teach ourselves that taking a day or so, or at least giving yourself one day out of a week, um, if you have nothing that's too pressing that you have to do, taking one day, one day is not a crime. And if you have been at, you know, working and doing the daily grind, um, like for a couple weeks to a month or so, um, you're owed at least a couple days. You owe, you owe yourself a couple days. You do. Because if you keep pushing yourself and making yourself go, 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 eventually, sooner rather than later, you're going to burn yourself out. I've seen it. God, I've seen it. Um, I have a relative that keeps every minute, every second of their life busy. If they're not at church doing stuff throughout the week, they're at work throughout the week. Um, weekends are chock full of stuff. Um, they're going out with friends. They, I mean, they, they're, they're constantly around people and they are never at home. They're never at home unless to sleep, shower, um, go to the bathroom and eat. Literally, that's it. That's it. And they scrape by when it comes to caring for their home and all that. I mean, and if and, and, and if they're not at school or not at church, they're doing other things every everywhere else. Um, they're constantly around people, and I honestly don't know how they do it because there there is at least I made it a personal rule that. When I had my emotional and mental breakdown when I was 17, because I was so hard on myself, and if I wasn't doing something at school, I was always into some kind of sports, um, and if I wasn't into anything, and, and if I wasn't doing anything pertaining to either of those, I was doing something um, for everybody else but me. Age 17, I didn't even know myself. I was just, I just thought I was just like some kind of like, you know, existence. And I did, qu and, and when I was younger, I had asked my mother about, you know, why, I, I uh, what was my question? I was like 10 or 9 years old, and I said, Mom, why does everybody experience things the way I experience them. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I see and feel everything. And I told, I tried to explain it when I was six, but I had that feeling of, um, I had that feeling of, uh, like, like I was out here and everybody was just in this cluster of whatever. But thing is, I was self-aware. I became self-aware out of the clear blue, I never, I didn't ask for it, I didn't try for it, I didn't even know what it was. I became self-aware ever since I can remember any memory of this life. And, um, thing is, once you become self-aware, it's hard to be dumb, deaf, and blind in a spiritual sense. I was experiencing things at a different level. I couldn't focus in school halfway. Everyone considered it to be ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. But the thing is, I had all this energy and I didn't know how to utilize it. I didn't know. I questioned everything. If a teacher told me that... <clears throat> Oh, I, good, good example here. I remember I got into a huge, um, vendetta with a teacher that, my science teacher that said, um, well, biology teacher, 
she was trying to tell us that human beings um, were from evolution. Now, I don't discredit evolution. I asked her the simple question. I said, she said, we came from monkeys. I said, I said, well, what, what happened to, I said, what happened to the Cro-Magnon? What happened to the Neanderthals? Because if you look at all the scientific uh, background, you would see that Cro-Magnon man popped up out of literally nowhere. She said, oh, you know, like Darwinism, you know, evolution and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, but where did we come from before monkeys were monkeys? If you're saying we came from monkeys, where did the monkeys come from? Well, they came from, um, we, they, they came from the cell stage. I said, where do those cells come from? I wanted to know the very beginning, the very, very, very beginning. She said the big bang happened and things happened, uh, just to the right circumstances and the just right time and everything had an opportune moment and it and and it just clicked together and I'm like I don't doubt that but something had to have some there's something more I kept telling her there's something more to this that you're telling us there's something more there's something more she, and, and as I got older yeah you daring straight there's something more we're not being told everything we are not. And you're an idiot. Not you guys. The driver of that truck. He was in the opposite flow of traffic. In a lane. And almost wrecked. But yes, please take a whole row of parking spaces. Okay. I need to calm down. I'm OCD about parking and driving. <clears throat> Anywho. I digress. Um... Before, if you're awakened and self-aware, you need to owe it to yourself to have at least one hour, one day, one morning, one afternoon, one night, one day, or whatever. Or a couple days. Set aside some time for you. You have to. If you meditate and at least take some time to yourself, you will see a big difference of so much. Sorry. I know y'all probably heard me heard me do that. I didn't mean to burp. But um Everything, everyone, and every being relies on everybody else and relies on you to get it together. Now, I know a lot of you people think, you know, like, oh, I feel like something's building up. I feel like something's gonna big going to happen where everybody's involved. You're right. There will be. It will be. It's not a matter of when. It's not a matter of how. It just will. It may be something that is televised. It may not very well be. It will be something that nobody can explain. An overwhelming feeling that will occur to the vast majority of populace. Heck, maybe every single body and everything. We are not built and... And, and we are not built and, ex and, and hardwired to know everything. And if we did, the beauty that you see and experience would not exist if we did. 
pleasant surprises would never happen. Heck, even the bad surprises wouldn't. But you have to take the good with the bad. <clears throat> it's like experiences in life are, are like, let's say, a nut. A nut. It's hard. It's dirty. Sometimes you got to pick them off the ground. Sometimes you got to climb a tree to get to them. The thing is, you have to break the shell of the nut in order to get to the good parts. Or it could be like an everlasting gobstopper. Sure, it may be sour and there'll be all these sour layers and all that of the candy, but when you get to the sweet center, oh, it's well worth it. Or a blow pop where the gum is inside. You got to go through that hard uh, candy to get to the gum. Nothing good, nothing good ever, ever comes in life without some hard work, some tears, some sweat, and maybe some blood. Nothing good ever comes and just happens without somebody working at it, either for you or for yourself. Thing is, it is so well worth it when you finally do. Oh. But trust me when I say that you have to have the bad with the good and the good with the bad. And I'm going to be honest. If life had, if our lives was nothing but good, we would never appreciate all that is good. If we didn't have evil, good could not exist. Because if you just had one or the other, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You wouldn't realize how blessed you are. You wouldn't realize how lucky you are, how fortunate you are. You would have to have something to compare it to. And if someone lived a whole life of rainbow sunshine and bunnies and unicorns, there would be absolutely no spiritual growth. There would be absolutely no strength of character. If everything was just handed to us, we, we wouldn't be individuals. We would just be existence. We wouldn't live. We would just exist. We wouldn't leave the stages of infancy, if that was the case. If, we, if everything was given to us and handed to us and everything was all great and wonderful and we got our way all the time, we would never leave the stage of infancy. We would just be babbling idiots crawling around. You know? Through struggle, through pain, there is growth. There is beauty. There is art. There is love. There is passion. There is all the wonderful, beautiful things that no one really can see but feel and feel it in your core spirit and your heart. Life is meant to be experienced and is meant to be a struggle. Because without the struggle, we wouldn't be strong. We wouldn't, you would never hear of a story of someone saving someone's life against all odds. There would be no heroes if we, if there was no struggle and, ad, and animosity. There would be no heroes. There would be no heroines. There would be no strong and admirable people. There would be no art. There would be, some of the best artists struggled and fought and were in the most pain. I mean, heck, Van Gogh cut his own ear off. Because in his way, it made sense, and he struggled. 
He struggled with a lot of problems, too. Opium. Being one of them. <laughs> um... What's another hero that, um, an artist? Um, and here's a hero. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. He struggled. He was made fun of, picked on. He had a hard life. He did. He had a really hard life. Joan of Arc. She was a woman in her own religion, but it against her. Um, George Washington. You should look up at what he went through. Abraham Lincoln. Him too. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. You need to look at what she's gone through in order to be a hero. All this struggle, all this pain, you think it's for nothing? Buckle your seatbelts, because it's not. The most funniest people, the best, comed the best comedians you ever know, like Robin Williams, George Carlin, those are, and um, those are, oh, Richard Pryor, those are just to name a few. Those people suffered and came from pretty hard backgrounds. They were the most funniest people. They're in the Hall of Fame, probably. I haven't personally looked, but I know that they are notable people. And if you mention their name, people automatically know what they're known for. Robert Williams, actor and comedian. Richard Pryor, actor, comedian, and what again? George Carlin. Actor, comedian, and activist. Didn't know that, did you? These people were known. And they struggled. They didn't become the best at what they did. With everything coming easy. Because none of that came easy. Fame never, ever comes easy. Never. Never. Nelson Mandela, his fame certainly did not come easy. That poor man been through hell and back. Figuratively and literally. But... You have to be strong and set aside time for you and get to know yourself. Know your strengths. Know your weakness. There's no shame in crying. There's no shame in being angry. There's no shame in being happy. There's no shame in being sad. And there's no shame in any of these feelings and these things you're going through. There should be no shame. The only reason why we try to hide it is because... We're told by a vast majority of mentally, emotionally, and spiritually sick people that you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't be upset, you should always be happy, you should always find positivity everywhere you go, but they don't ever tell you how to get it. You have to struggle a little bit. You have to be in some kind of pain for a little bit. Not forever. You gotta overcome it. You gotta cope. Yeah, sure, crap happened, but you're alive. Be thankful for what you do have. In this society, we're we're like hardwired to compare ourselves, like, and and covet things that we want and that we see others have. Oh, so and so's got a nice car. I really wish I had a nice car. Never mind the fact you have one that runs and has done, it's done right by you. So-and-so has health insurance. They're sick all the time. I wish I had health insurance. 
Be thankful that you're healthy enough you don't really desperately need it. Here's another one. So-and-so has perfect hair. I wish I had perfect hair. Never mind that you have hair. Oh, I'm going bald. So-and-so has a head full of hair. Never mind the fact that you can save money on shampoo and haircuts. Think about it. Whatever you're going through, whatever you have or don't have, it's perfectly, basically designed just for you because it is what you need and it is what you can handle. You don't know if you can't handle having long hair or perfect hair. You don't know if you can handle... You know, maybe those people with perfect hair and that have hair have to spend a very good while in front of the mirror or in the shower to manage it. I can tell you that I have to, have to swap shampoos every now and then in the middle of using a bottle. Um, I've, I also got to, I have to use a comb to brush, uh, to comb in my conditioner. Um, sometimes to comb in the shampoo because my hair is so thick. Um, I have to wet thoroughly, wash, rinse, condition, comb, rinse, and fight with the loose hair that is all over my body after I wash my hair. Plus I have to brush my hair while um, when I'm done. And then I have to have it up in a towel for a little bit. And then I have to brush it again. I can't tell you how much work I put into my hair and only end up with this. But I don't care. It is mine. Me, myself, and I. There are people that don't have hair that have to buy other people's hair to make wigs out of it. Talk about expensive. Bottom line is... You are you. Nobody else can be you. They can try, come close, and have a nervous breakdown in the process. But yeah. Only you can be you. And you may very well be the answer to somebody's prayers and wishes. What you say and what you do echoes through life and people. <clears throat> you have no idea knowing that if you were if you were trying so busy to be somebody or something else you may very well lose out on something that was just for you a person an experience a new chapter in life if you were yourself you wouldn't miss out on a bit of that I, I regret not trying to be myself sooner. Because if being myself sooner resorted into what I have now, you know what I mean? Like, if I was myself sooner, there's no telling what I have missed out on. What I have not, what I would have not missed out on. I probably would have found my husband sooner. Because we were crossing each other's paths, like, gosh, throughout teenhood, pre-teenhood and teenhood, and young adulthood. I mean, we, we finally, like, made a point to date and got to where we are now in 2010. If I was myself sooner, I probably would have saved myself a lot of grief. With all the crap I put myself through. But I do not regret the experiences I've had that made me strong and smarter. That made me who I am today. 
So, I will leave with that. Love and light to you all. Have a good day. And if you ever need advice or need help in achieving in what I've just talked about, I am more than happy to help you. But if you want me to do a reading on you, there are rates, but not expensive. Because it does take a lot out. After I do a reading, I do get it like extraordinarily hungry and dehydrated feeling. But, anywho, love and light to you all. I wish you all a very good day. And go out there and live life or take the day off. Treat yourself. <laughs>